Hello everyone. This video is going to be metaphysical in nature, so if you're one of my viewers who just isn't into that, <laughs> you don't have to watch. Although this is an interesting topic and I'm sure you are interested in hearing what I have to say about this, regardless. Um, I got a request a few months ago to talk about scrying with crystals. Um, and I thought I'd do a video just about scrying in general, but that would mainly focus on crystals. Um, I almost had forgotten about this, but recently one of my friends actually asked me about it. So I thought, well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's do a video about this. It's good. Um, so for those who aren't aware of scrying, it's basically the art of gazing into um, objects for the purposes of divination. Um, so examples of this would be like mirror gazing. Um, you can like look into a mirror, scrying into it and uh, produce this kind of phenomenon. Um, you can also do it with um, a lot of witches use like black mirrors that are specifically made for scrying. Um, you can do it with water. Um, that's actually quite an often used thing. Um, scrying by moonlight is really common with witches. Um, you can like basically get a black bowl of water and put it in the moonlight and then like gaze into it. Or you can put like candles on either side of your um, implement like a crystal ball or, or just a crystal itself, um, or your, you know, uh, mirror and that kind of thing. Having the kind of dim light is good. And also, um, there's a belief that if you have fire, it helps bring spirits forward more. If you have like a, a, those elements present, fire and smoke are good for that. So that's why you'll have witches burning incense and having candles going. It helps um, bring in those energies. Um, so anyway, with scrying, um, now I, I use crystals for scrying. I don't do it regularly. Um, and I find it to be very different from other forms of divination that I have familiarity with, like palm reading or tarot card reading, um, or like automatic writing and that kind of thing. Um, Scrying, it's the thing about it that is very cool is that you, it's something that's very mystical. And once you experience it, I mean, there's no real, like, I don't know how to say this. There's no real way to, like, describe it well. And I really don't like, this is what I've decided about talking about magic stuff on my channel. I don't like talking about magical topics with people who aren't on that path. It seems very pointless to make them understand something that they have no investment in. So this is why I get kind of anxious about being put in this position as to like often represent like what a witch is. I haven't chosen to do that as my path yet, I guess. You know what I mean? Like I've I've come out of the broom closet if you will. I think this stuff is important to talk about, but I'm not at the point where I'm like, want to convert, you know? Um, <clears throat> and I also, yeah, I just, seeing how that kind of lifestyle pans out, I do have some kind of political problems with it too. So I just, I've decided to step back from that a bit, but anyway. With scrying, it's one of those experiences that is hard to explain unless somebody knows what you're talking about. But what I can best say is um, through your gazing into this implement, often with an intention, although I've scried with no intention and found those to be some of the most powerful scrying experiences, um, when I have, my intention is just to do the thing. And I, I do this gazing exercise and I look into something like a crystal um, and I have the experience that I have. Um, how can I, let me talk about one experience I had with crystal scrying. 
I had a very tiny marble sized smoky quartz crystal years ago, years ago, as I was just starting to kind of like step back into my pagan path. I got this crystal because I was feeling just so overwhelmed with so many things. And I just felt like rocks were a good place to start, you know, in, in getting back to my roots. You know, I collected rocks as a kid, so crystals have always been something that have, has been, I've draw, been drawn to that earth power and, and also the power of the planet that we're on to create such insanely beautiful things within herself. Like, what a, what a divine, divine planet this is. So, um, yeah, I got crystals. Anyway, I was just very absentmindedly gazing into this smoky quartz crystal with no intention really set other to kind of other than to kind of like stare into it. Like I wasn't even attempting to scry, I don't think. Um, and I began to see clouds and lightning kind of storming up in the crystal. And it was very quick like that this happened. It wasn't like it wasn't like, you know, I'd been staring for a while and I was in a trance or something. It just kind of happened very quickly that I was mesmerized by this object. And this this happened. And I I don't want to go into everything else that I saw and, and, and kind of what happened from there. But like that, that the visions that were produced were within the crystal. Like I wasn't seeing them in my mind's eye, which is how I often have visions. I was seeing, seeing it within the crystal and that was incredibly just alarming to me. Like I hadn't even really thought that I would be doing this and that kind of spurned my interest in scrying. So anyway, in order to do it, you can have like a magical experience where you're just pulled like I was with a crystal. Um, or you can do what most people have to do and which I have to do most of the time, which is to pick your implement like, let's just say a crystal, since that's what I'm talking about here. And, you know, really kind of gaze into it. You want to allow yourself, and this is the thing with any sort of practice, where you're using objects to have a spiritual experience, whether they be like tarot cards or a crystal or an herb, you know, or even your breath or like focusing on like one word, you want to allow yourself to become this magnificently complex living organism. You want to allow this thing that you are, this, this entity to become in awe of something that is inert. You want to allow yourself to become mesmerized and captivated and, and honestly humbled by the divinity of an object which is seemingly lifeless you want to be able to see and this is where it comes in you see the fifth element within the object you see the living spark that is in all of creation and once you're there in that and and, and in that sacred space with something like a crystal where you actually allow yourself to give yourself over to this object in order to learn. That's when you scry. <laughs> That's when you start to see things. And sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes you're there like just staring and you're not getting much and you're asking questions and your mind is racing and you're hard, it's hard to be still with it and you don't get much. And sometimes you'll have visions in your mind's eye. Sometimes they will appear on the mirror. This is how it's often described. Um, you can also use mirrors to bring forward spirits as well um, to speak to you if you're into that. But that's a little bit different than scrying. Scrying is specifically like just your own mental exercise. So yeah, um, from there you should begin to see visions either in your mind's eye, in, in your water, crystal, your mirror. Um, and the things you may see may be kind of confusing. They're often subconscious things. So you may see a white rabbit. 
you may see something like an eagle. Uh, you may see a tree. Uh, you may see like thunder and lightning. You may see uh, like a memory. You may see a, a landscape. These are all things that can be produced. So what I will say about this is that like it's a unique experience, but also an experience that many people can do. And if you're interested in like really utilizing crystals in a magical way, scrying is great. I mean, it really, it's a, it's a powerful thing. Like I'm not so much into using crystals for like all their woo woo properties. Oh, I hate using that term, but you know what I mean? Like this one brings luck and this one brings healing and this one brings like, I'm not into that. Okay. But using a crystal to have like a psychedelic sort of experience that is like producing visions, that's cool. That's, that's, that's some cool magical stuff there. That's kind of what I'm into with it. That being said, I do keep crystals and collect crystals and give people crystals as gifts. You know, I am that one. So, um, yeah, I would say like, if you're interested, like pick a good crystal, you know, or, you know, your other implement, but like often you want something that has like stuff going on in it. I don't like to gaze into like purely clear crystals. Um, also crystals with different properties, like uh, my dream, my one vanity item that I really want to get is a big, uh, like a uh, smoky quartz crystal ball. Like I have a plain one and it's great, but like, it's not, it's harder for me to produce visions with, honestly. I prefer something that has more color and more depth. Um, yeah. And don't be afraid to experiment with stuff like that. It doesn't have to be crystal clear. It doesn't have to be what I've recommended. If you want like an obsidian crystal ball, like to just gaze into this black thing, fucking go for it. I've also really like been intrigued by like green crystals and red crystals. Like you can even use like glass as well. You know, don't think you have to buy an actual crystal, but I do think there is something special specifically about the stone itself. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm kind of like into that. And also it's, it's, you know, just a value thing. Like if you're going to buy something and invest it, like I find investing and in, in stuff like that can be really helpful because you take it more seriously, you know, at least most of the time. Some people don't have to do that, but a lot of people do. Um, so yeah, just, you know, gaze, I guess, into your crystals. Um, oh, one thing I did want to say too, I wanted to bring up, t um, using substances while, crystal gazing. So you can burn like herbs, like mugwort is often good to help produce visions, um, or other like kind of plants. That's just one that springs to mind right now, obviously incense. Um, but you can also, uh, they often work well if you're taking an ethnogenic substance too. Um, although I haven't done much of that, I just know that that's a really commonly used tool. Um, wind scrying, but I've usually just scried like sober. I, you know, don't, it's just, I'm doing other work. If I'm on an ethnogenic substance that I don't think, oh, I want to scry like, or, oh, I want to do this. It's usually like I'm doing some other work. So I don't have as much experience with that, but if that is something like, you know, I do know that taking like flying ointments and herbs can be helpful for it as well. So just, you know, be kind of natural about it. Do what, what you think is right in terms of how comfortable you feel, um, with it and, and kind of go with your hunches about it. It's one of those things where you kind of have to have stillness and you kind of have to have quiet time and you need to have time to dedicate to it. You know, it's not instantaneous. So at least most of the time. So yeah, just have at it, have fun. Um, yeah. And I will be back again with another video later this week. So thank you for listening. Um, <sighs> 
Yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, be sure to subscribe. If you aren't subscribed, like the video, share the video if you're inclined. Um, and of course, get in touch with me on the other websites I am on in the low bar. All right. Later. Thanks for watching. Bye.